Alexander. And we're giving this talk on behalf of myself, uh, Alexander Shubi, and uh, Chris sitting here in the audience. So if you have questions, it's for the four of us. Um, so I'm going to go quickly through the agenda for today. So we have been discarding tabs, um, but we want to make discarding better. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We also started. Uh, delaying the load when you are doing a session restore, and I'm going to mention a little bit about that as well. And as we discard and delay those pages, we want to inform the developers that we're doing such things. So we don't want to keep them in out of the loop. So we're adding the lifecycle APIs that we talked about before, and we're going to talk more in detail on what entails current lifecycle APIs. And we will talk about freezing and throttling background pages as a way to get this new lifecycle world. And we'll talk about what it means for Blink and Chromium. The last thing uh, we are going to talk about is something a little bit in the future, which is once we discard those tabs, we want to give the developers the ability to do the things that they were able to do for background tabs using new APIs that we're going to talk about later. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is discarding tabs. So we actually have been doing it for a while for critical conditions. So if uh, Chrome is running under very critical memory conditions. We would pick some tabs and kill them more or less randomly at the moment. Um, we are improving this, and we're doing it using some ML models and better heuristics and actually trying to figure out which tabs to kill. The second thing is that we're actually going to be proactively killing these tabs. And we're not just going to wait until you are critically um, under critical memory resources and killing those tabs. We're going to try to do it in a proactive way so that you don't get to the critical space. But since we're doing it in a more proactive way, we should be telling the developers that we're actually killing their tabs instead of uh, them figuring out in different ways. So this is where the lifecycle APIs come back in, into the picture. Um, so some of this have already shipped since M55, and we're shipping new stuff, M68, M69. Um, and more about how they can use the platform APIs is coming in M70. The second thing that uh, this is a new effort that we've been working on. People have been complaining once you open uh, your Chrome and then you have 300 tabs that were actually in Chrome before and you're doing what we call a session restore. And then you have Gmail in the for front foreground tab and you're trying to interact with your Gmail, but your Gmail is not responsive at all because Chrome is trying to load all of the 300 tabs in the background. Uh, so the desktop team has actually been working on postponing loading these pages in the background. And some of this uh, is shipping in uh, M66 has already shipped, and more or less of it is coming in M68 and M69. Um, we're trying to be more smart on figuring out what is the CPU budget, network budget, and memory budget for these tabs uh, and load them according to the importance to the user. And you should be seeing a lot of uh, improvements toward that in, in the upcoming version. Uh, also, where there are some tabs that will never get loaded. It's like you have loaded the tab and then discarded it again. But instead of doing that cycle of like loading it and then discarding it, we're avoiding the load in the first place because we know that the user will never get to that tab. Um, so again, if you have questions about that, uh, talk to Chris and his team. Uh, Francois, I believe, is in the back, and Seb as well. Um, also. Again, since we are doing more proactive discarding of the tabs, and we're also doing something what we're going to be calling freezing, um, we want to be able to inform the web developers that their pages are actually getting discarded and frozen. Um, Shubi in the last blink on had a draft for uh, what we had in mind for the lifecycle API. Since then, we have refined this API a lot. Um, we have a spec drafted, and hopefully, will go out soon. Um, and uh, according to the APIs that we have in mind, we currently have an implementation that is behind the flag that you can try now. And I will show you in a demo in a second on how actually to try it on yourself, uh, for yourself. Uh, the last thing we did is that we also integrated it with Chrome Discard so that you can actually go ahead and test it on your own personal website and see how it works. So this is the current design. Uh, I know that the slide is not the most readable slide ever. Uh, you don't have to take a picture. I guess you can find this picture in the in the link here. Um, but what I want to highlight here, basically, is that we are, so this is the original life cycle of the web. We never really annotated it this way, but this is what actually was happening before. 
But what we're adding is we're adding these two new states, which is a frozen state and a discarded state. So these are kind of new states that we're trying to add to the web so that this is a new life cycle of the web page. Uh, the frozen state is like you're not really doing anything on your page and it's in the background. It's not important to the user. We're going to put it in this state. And then after it's in this state for a while, maybe we'll discard it to even free more memory. Um, and then there is links on how to resume to back into a life cycle once you are in the frozen or the discarded state. Uh, so this is more zoomed in uh, on the new part of the code. So your page was hidden at some point, and uh, it's in the background. Nobody is really using it, and it's consuming some of the resources, but the user is not really uh, paying for these resources in a way. Um, so we decide to freeze it. But before we freeze it, we were going to add a new callback here, which we are calling unfreeze. So this is a callback the user was going to ever get before their page is may be discarded because it can go through this flow, right? So this is their last chance to do anything on the page, like stopping timers and so forth. And then if we decide, oh, maybe we shouldn't have frozen this page, then we can resume it. And I will tell, tell the developers that the page has been resumed by adding this also another new callback. If the page was actually discarded and they sort of revisit the page, then we're adding the document was discarded so that they know that this is not a new load. This is a reload of the page. And we're also working through the details of adding the last client ID so that they can link back what was discarded with what's being reloaded. So this is what we expect the web developers to use these new states for. Um, so mainly the hidden frozen uh, transition is the most important transition, and we're giving them the callback on freeze. And in this transition, uh, they're going to do like reporting analysis that the page is getting frozen. Uh, they're going to do teardown, um, handing off any background to the service worker or the workers that they have, and then save any transient UI states. Uh, frozen to active, basically, they need to undo some of the stuff that they saved if they need to, um, and also report resumption to analytics. From frozen to discarded, we want to make sure that the developers are not into the interaction loop because we want to be able to do this as fast as possible. We don't want to be delayed from discarding the page because we are probably under critical resources at this point. And finally, from the discarded to active, where we're adding the was discarded bit, they can use the um, save UI state here, and then they can restore it uh, to the user so, so that they feel that the page hasn't really been gone and back. It can be a more seamless experience. Uh, so this is how we expect uh, our users to actually use this code um, by having uh, event listener on freeze and resume. So the freeze, they can close NXDB connection, reuse, freeze the web logs of the timers. And then on the reinitialize, they can uh, restart the timers and do the opposite of the did um, in the freeze space. So we know that this freezing thing is going to be super controversial and it's going to break a lot of stuff. And we're already seeing it break stuff. So please, please, please. Um, it's currently behind the flag. I'm going to show you how to use it. Please go use it and tell us what breaks. And reach us out on either Chrome Lifecycle APIs at Google, or uh, please file a bug on the issue tracker for the web lifecycle. So now it's time for my demo. Hopefully, uh, it will work. <laughs> so. So here I have. Um, a bunch of loading tasks and a bunch of timers firing every 200 milliseconds. And every time they fire, if actually they do fire in 200 milliseconds, they put the green bar in this, uh, on the screen. Um, what I will do now is that I'm going to open Chrome Discards. So my other tab was in the background for like maybe two seconds. So let's go back there. Oh, the timer is actually throttled here. So when, uh, and, and uh, Alex is going to talk about throttling in a moment. So it got throttled, so that actually didn't hit the 200 millisecond threshold. It hit around 500 milliseconds on these on this period. Um, and the next thing is, but the loading was not throttled at the moment, so we're still thinking about it. Is that I'm going to freeze it, and now I got the frozen uh, state, so it got frozen. I'm going to wait for a couple of seconds, and then I'm going to go back to the page. So as you can see, when it was actually frozen, none of the tasks actually ran. 
So this is actually is a big block that was drawn here after it was resumed because nothing was actually running during this period. And now uh, Alex is going to talk to us more about how uh, we're doing freezing and throttling. Yeah. Thank you, Fadi. So Fadi uh, described what is the future uh, of the life cycle world, and I'm going to talk you through the steps we are going to, uh, to take to get there. So there are two big parts to our journey to this new world. It's freezing and throttling. Freezing is all about invoking on, on freeze callback and transitioning between uh, hidden state and frozen state and doing and actually not doing anything in the frozen state and throttling is all about addressing the hidden case and ensuring that even the page is not frozen yet it can't burn your cpu and the resource consumption stays limited uh, so one of the architectural efforts that have been going on in the uh, scheduling in in the chrome and blink overall is per frame scheduling effort it is the effort that makes possible uh, all our life cycle work and it can be described uh, using these pictures that I drawn. So this is the outline of the scheduling architecture in the render process. So we have main thread schedule, which is responsible for scheduling things on the main thread. Uh, it uh, has a bunch of page schedule, one for each page, and each page scheduler uh, in its turn has some frame schedulers for frames. And there are a bunch of task queues, and each task, which is, which is running in Blink in the render process, uh, is associated with what is posted to one of these task queues. So there are a bunch of uh, main thread scheduler uh, task, uh, task queues. For example, compositor task queue, garbage collection task queue for the tasks that can't be tied to a frame. And there is a default task queue, which is a particular nasty. And so there are a bunch of uh, frame schedulers with. with uh, a collection of task queues, so each frame scheduler has uh, its own task queues, and when the page is hidden, we can freeze or throttle the uh, frames belonging to the uh, relevant uh, frame schedulers. And one of the particular APIs that we have in Chromium is Threat Task Runner Handle Get, and when you use it, uh, the ta you get a handle to the default task queue in the render process, and it means that uh, these tasks posted through using this method are not associated with any, with any pages or any frames, and we don't have any relevant any schedule metadata that is needed uh, to schedule them, to freeze them, and throttle them. And we've been converting uh, these calls uh, to use uh, local frame task get task runner. I'm terribly sorry for my typo. Uh, so get task runner, and it returns uh, you have to have the frame object uh, to to get get a relevant task runner, and when you post task using these task runners, you get one uh, of the per frame queues, and that means the scheduler knows the relevant information, and we can do freezing and, st and throttling of the relevant tasks. Uh, Hajmer was driving this effort for the past two quarters, and I'm happy to say that we dropped the number of an un unannotated tasks uh, in, the, uh, in the Chromium from 20% to 4%. And we are still uh, converting and we're still uh, dealing with it. And so if you own a component in uh, Chrome, uh, in Chrome render, content render, or any components, you will find some patches from us. And your help is most appreciated. Maybe at some point we will ask you to help us out. Uh, and back to freezing and throttling. So freezing, uh, it's all about transitioning between hidden state and frozen state. and uh, how the Chrome handles the frozen state. Uh, the end goal of the frozen of the frozen state is that we don't run any JavaScript uh, tasks at all in the frozen state. Uh, it the end goal, but we are not quite here. We are starting with uh, stopping just timers, ju uh, set timeout and set interval callbacks, and we are expanding in the next Chrome release uh, these to to also support stop loading tasks. And we gradually will increase to all JavaScript tasks. Uh, the second part is uh, invo actually invoking on freeze callback and transitioning to the frozen state. Uh, we know that it can break an app. For example, if you have a chat app which refreshes in background and uses uh, this refresh to show you the notification and play the sound when you have a new app, that can break. 
So because of that, we are going to uh, to, to go gradually. Uh, at the uh, at the start, we will freeze pages only on mobile because the expectation uh, of page staying alive in the background is uh, less important there on mobile. So we'll start with uh, freezing after five minutes on mobile. Then we expand uh, to desktop by smartly understanding, smartly analyzing pages, what APIs they use, and if it's safe or not to freeze the, that page. So, and the timeline is like that. Like that. So five years ago, we started stopping uh, timers on mobile after five minutes as an ad hoc intervention. In the M68 uh, Chrome release, we are going to bring this intervention under lifecycle umbrella, and we will continue to stop timers after five minutes, but we will also fire um, on freeze callbacks and on resume callbacks when the page gets uh, foregrounded again. Uh, in the next Chrome release, M67, we are going to uh, expand mobile stopping from, load, from just timers to also include loading tasks. Uh, and as far as desktop is concerned, we are starting an experiment to freezing uh, page, pages when they have no network activity in the last hour and they stayed in background. So a very conservative start. And in M69 Chrome release, uh, thanks to the crisis, Chris Hamilton's teamwork, we will be able to smartly figure out which pages can be safely discarded, can, uh, can be discarded, and we'll discard, discard them when they're in background and not needed anymore. And in order to, to allow web developers to save the state, we'll invoke the freeze callback. The long-term vision for freezing is that uh, when we, when the page is backgrounded and it's done loading, we will freeze it right right away, and we will. Uh, and the page will be able to use some background APIs to do legitimate work in background. Throttling is about uh, addressing hidden state and controlling the pages that are not frozen yet because uh, they're not downloading or because uh, we determine that it's not safe uh, for us to freeze this page completely. The idea is to limit resource usage uh, from this page so this page can still some do uh, can do some work so that breakage is limited and it's less aggressive than freezing. The implementation specific uh, part is that each page has a, has a budget. Budget uh, replenishes over time. Uh, you can't run any new task when the budget is negative uh, and uh, running task reduces your budget. And once again, it, it will be a gradual rollout of as a series of interventions. Uh, it started seven years ago when set timeouts and set in intervals were throttled in the background page to, uh, to running once a second. Uh, one year ago in Chrome 56, we, implement, we also implemented budget-based throttling. So even uh, when you have a lot of timers, we limit uh, them to 1% uh, for each background tab. Uh, in M68, we will also throttle dedicated workers in, uh, associated with background pages to prevent CPU hijacking. Uh, but the future timeline also, also includes stopping non-timer tasks uh, gradually over the course of this year. And the long-term plan is that uh, we'll use throttling to control loading of the background page. So until so when the page is done loading, it will be frozen, but we will throttle it while it's loading to ensure that it is lo loads in a sustainable way and does not impact the foreground. And here I am going to talk about Blink, Chromium, and implementing all these nice features. Surprisingly, it's hard. It's hard mostly because Chromium and Blink were not built with the assumption that tasks can be frozen or throttled. Uh, web platform uh, and web uh, apps also were built with this assumption in mind, which does not make anything any easier. Uh, several examples that we encountered uh, uh, that service worker st uh, started to time out during startup when we start when we stopped loading tasks because uh, it relied on the ability to run loading tasks uh, to start up uh, and sometime last year we accidentally uh, expanded our time of throttling to include index DB, uh, index DB tasks and it broke Google Docs because uh, Google Docs relies on communication between foreground and background tab tabs using IndexedDB. And when you throttle background page, it can't do any more work. It can't release the logs. 
and it means that foreground page uh, gets <coughs> gets blocked. And if you own a component, if you own a piece of code, I would very much like to ask you to think: Does it whether it effect, affects you or not? And if it does, or you are not sure, please talk to us. We are most happy to talk talk to you, to listen to you. And please reach us at Chromium, at scheduledef at chromium.org. And one particular intervention that I want to highlight as a success example. So we are stopping uh, loading tasks on mobile after five minutes. That has a plenty of benefits. So it has some downsides, like we broke things, but we fix them now. Uh, benefits include that we prevent uh, badly written pages from uh, chewing th through your uh, network and drawing your network cap overnight when you accidentally leave your phone. And, exper and the numbers from the beta channel, the beta, beta experiment, are really positive. So they show significant increase, uh, decrease in first contentful paint, first meaningful paint metrics uh, in the scenarios when we have multiple tabs. Also, switch tabs, switch time between tabs has improved because uh, because of this intervention, we have important tabs uh, loading sooner, and we are planning to ship this intervention in the very next Chrome release. Um, the last thing we want to talk about is that, as we said, we're taking away your background tabs. Uh, so if you were a chat app or an inbox uh, Gmail app or something like that. You would still want to notify the user when they get a new email or uh, or something like that. Um, so we want to give the functionality back. So imagine you are seeing a background tab. What can you see? All you can see is a small um, title in the tab bar, right? So this is something that the uh, web developers used to use to in, uh, bring the focus of the user back to their tab, like giving them a notification that they have a new message or something. So if we discard the tabs, they also lose the ability to update the small area of the screen that they had uh, the ability to do. So we're working uh, with the service worker team on actually a new proposal that you can do use a UN client from the service worker to update the title and update the URL. We're also looking on how to play an audio from, um, from the service worker directly without waking up the render process in the first place. So these are still uh, projects that are under investigation. Um, we have a problem is that we couldn't really figure out when to wake up the service worker. Like we need to use some sort of push notification, but we didn't want to go through the push notification uh, permission model, for example. Um, and also, since the tab has been discarded, you don't really have a window client in the first place. But we're going to create a new window client or keep the existing window client so that the, the developers can use it. So there are still problems that we're working through. Uh, but hopefully, this would be a proposal that we ship so that we can discard more tabs. Because currently, all of these tabs are being automatically opted out uh, because they cannot be discarded because they still update the title. But we want to reach out to these tabs as well by giving them an alternative. Um, the last thing is that uh, this work has been an effort um, between the lifecycle team in Mountain View, uh, the Blink scheduler, uh, which uh, Alex uh, is part of in London, and the Blink scheduler in Tokyo, and the desktop team in Montreal. So we want to thank all of them uh, to get us to this point. And now, questions. Yes. So I'm curious for um, the involved for trolling, especially for freezing. Uh, you said you're going to basically not process any JavaScript now. What about other tabs? What are we going to have? What, what's going to happen to those? One most interested in if you have um, a module API that is implemented within the frame and somebody is making module calls to that API, basically those are scheduled tasks on some thread run, right? What happens? Yeah, so we actually have a number of different task queues and uh, we have, it's a pretty conservative approach of starting with freezing and talking to safest task queues. So look, for example, timers is one task queue that we can even freeze. The next one is loading. We are so the stuff you're talking about is probably in an ICP task queue, and we're not planning to do that. No plan. Or so, ICP, yeah, no plan. immediate plans to freeze them. So <laughs> there is two more here. There's one called unposable, where the IPCs end up in. So the unposable one for now is 
unpausable. That's not technically true. So <laughs> IPC, IPCs end up in one of these queues. Oh, okay. So okay. They, they are, at the moment, IPCs are not tied to a frame. I assume the actual components will have no dependency on the web platform where it if you're observing a frame or a document inside it and that document gets frozen or throttled, you would know about change of state as well? Yes, we're plumbing that back to the browser uh, through the resource coordinator and the tab manager are aware of it. Um, so when you say component, you mean like a Chrome? Like yeah, like C++ code inside the actual browser. Yes, yes. yes. So that information is now just starting to get. Are you talking about okay. things like Render Frame Observer? Either that or browser, yeah, friend, so we are thinking about how we exactly we're going to notify and implement that. And if you're one of the users and you're interested, please talk to us. Um, yes. Uh, will the work have a chance to figure out why that is started? So the web developer will uh, will get a notification that. Um, They will get an notification that they're getting freeze, but they actually won't get a notification that they're getting discarded. But they will know but on the load we will yes, there is a chance to communicate back to hey, Yes, because they will have the well discarded bit set to true so that they can send anything back to the server saying, Oh, we actually were discarded after that specific freeze. And if you manage to get the last client ID proposal through, then they will actually be able to tell which client that was frozen that tied back to which client that was actually uh, reloaded after the discard. So, I mean, there will be multiple reasons why you get discarded. Maybe you were left in the background for a long time, and that's why you got discarded. Or you were causing memory pressure. I think it would be cool, like, you know, if you were causing like, memory pressure and this is the you were discarded, it would be beneficial maybe for it. Yeah, we thought about exposing that via the reporting API, like, as opposed to like a first class web API. I think that's a no idea. Yeah, so that's another kind of proposal that hasn't really panned yeah. out yet. But if there is demand from developers, if they want a pressure signal between, you know, like on freeze and discard, that's something that we have thought about but not pursued yet. I, I would take it as a bit of information that your site is making trouble and you do live in the field reporting. Mm -hmm. And this is how you would then classify why your page is getting discarded. Are you only thinking about saving CPU resources, or are you also thinking about doing something on frozen, like you know, your image cache, you know, whatever is gets released, uh, gets uh, you know, uh, released and stuff like that. So, uh -huh. as you can see here, we have light first there in italics. That means that we're thinking about doing uh, some sort of memory first, but we haven't really thought about the specifics on what to do there. Um, the there has been a purge uh, proposal that is already in there, uh, but we haven't been really calling it. Um, so I no, I think we are calling a request memory purge or something like that on memory coordinator. I unfortunately don't don't have I don't I don't understand what the, what it means, but, but neither I, do I. Okay. <laughs> but was that your question when you're asking yeah, about yeah, being yeah. So, so for example, but that raises also an interesting question. If you, if you release image resources, let's say, then you have to drill up them afterwards. And then when you go into when you go into loading, that 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 is fine, you know, because you you, you, just, yep. you just you just essentially reload the entire app. But if you go into active, so, uh, so the, it's, it's the first time you introduce something in what platform where like image will be loaded twice by so, the same image element, for example. So as far as I understand, this API is on memory coordinator. Uh, it basically initiates uh, initiates garbage collection and just uh, removes unused memory. Yeah. I don't think it removes yeah, we're not it. dropping image not, 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 So reference memory, uh, reference images will not be dropped. That's what no. Okay. I think they, uh, actually they do drop some images, but only if they actually have them on this cache. Oh, okay. And they, they drop like frames that have been rendered that aren't really right now. So like that. I don't know what we can put them in. Okay. I do actually know the detail of um, we, we drop all the compositor textures. Um, we don't drop any image assets at the moment. Um, and that's because of Canvas. Uh, in Canvas, you can synchronously read out the image. But even if it's in the disk, 
You have to block on a you have to block the render on a disk right uh, on a disk read. Uh, and so at the moment we don't do encoded images. We would like to, but we need to pair that with something that if like the developer is hiring, I'm not going to use the sync chance. Um, we could also in theory drop things like the layout tree, but we don't do that because the way implementation is that would um, restart CSS animations. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like the, the purge that's done right now is only things that are very safe and have no impact on web compatibility. We might get more aggressive in the future, but that's sort of theoretical, no fact. Yeah. So Thanks. currently, freezes mostly for CPU and to freeze the CPU resources. And currently, if we get onto the crunch and the memory resources, we go to the discarded state. This is our current vision of it. But if we see that we're discarding too many pages that maybe have been saved, if we could uh, discard a few images, then maybe we would, we would add that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have a method on how many tasks get called in between the images? So we don't. We have by time. We have by task duration. Oh. When we freeze, we basically our metrics are almost around total task duration for mm -hmm. a few times. So we have the specific, you know, amount of task, total task duration that has reduced when you freeze a specific. Okay, but they will have to execute for new entry, right? Yes. So on return, we continue execution of these tasks. So uh, we thought about, so we had some concerns about uh, if uh, if we freeze pa page partially but not completely, there might be a scenario where page continues to post tasks mm -hmm. and that results in a memory leak. Uh, and that's a good motivation to stop everything. But uh, we've looked into that and we haven't had any reports of this case theoretically at the moment. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank for you. Coming. Thank you.